Hello there, my fellow green-skinned friends, and welcome to another lore episode covering aspects of the orcs and their friends. Today we are going to be talking in a bit more detail on one aspect of these Xenos that probably every one of you has heard at some point, and that is the infamous Wa. In this video I am going to do an overview of what the Wa is, how the orcs prepare for one, and what happens during one. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about the Wa, shall we? Barbaric and savage, the Greenskins spread across the galaxy like a Viridian stain. They plagued the battlefields of the late 41st millennium in great numbers, overrunning any who stand against them in a torrent of bloodshed and usually mindless violence. An orc war is war on an apocalyptic scale. Orcs beyond counting swarm from one world to the next. Whole civilizations are exterminated and defenders armies are laid to waste as the orcs plow ever onward in an unstoppable tide. Orcs need battle just as humans need food and drink. Due to their warlike nature, they constantly fight among themselves, or launch piratical raids upon nearby enemies. Such conflicts tend to be localized and small scale. They never really develop beyond random outbursts of violence and looting. However, orc populations can reach a critical mass that leads to a full planetary migration. This is known as a war a crusade of pure aggression that crashes through star systems in an orgy of violence. Orc behavior is dominated by the Wa, a gestalt psychic field they generate that affects the Orc psyche, which allows Orcs to instinctively recognize who is bigger, and therefore who is in charge. All Orcs generate this field, and it grows stronger as the Orcs enjoy themselves, generally while fighting, and as more and more of them congregate in a small area. The Wa gives momentum to the Orcs' planetary assault campaigns, which are also known as Wa's. A small note I would like to make here is that Orcs tend to call a lot of things Wa. This meaning can range from the migration itself to just a simple battle cry. Thousands of orcs will gather together, drawn to the power of a single dominant orc called a warboss or warlord. This guy will always be bigger and more intelligent than the orcs around him. Then the orcs will set off to find an enemy to fight and defeat. Only once the orcs have killed every conceivable enemy, they will start to fight among themselves again. The Imperium of Man's tech priests have theorized that this Gestalt psychic field also has a telekinetic or quantum probabilistic effect, allowing the seemingly ramshackle and poorly designed orc technology to work as the Greenskins wanted to. The reason for this hypothesis is that the Mechanicus believes a machine spirit inhabits all technology, and that this machine spirit serves mankind at the command of the machine god. If this is the case, without a machine spirit, orc machines cannot work, requiring some other psychic cause to justify their devastating effect. First and foremost among all of orcoid instincts is the literal need for an orc to wage war, and over the millennia of their existence, the Greenskins have become very, very good at it. Due to their inherently aggressive nature, orcs constantly fight among themselves to prove who is the strongest, sharpening their born warrior skills and weeding out the weak, though this process usually poses little threat to the galaxy at large. A wa usually starts small, perhaps even with just a single orc, who has been visited by the orcoid deities Gork and Mork with dreams of great carnage. He will impart his vision to others of his kind, through repeated blows to the head, or, if he is a bit more intellectual, he will build a great orc war machine like a gargant, that is the very image of his savage gods. Rumors of the coming Wa will spread through the local orcoid society, and the orcs begin to unite. New war bands join the growing throng with every passing day. An orc warboss will fight his way to the top of the hierarchy of this growing greenskin horde and earn the status of a warlord, adding the armies of those clans he conquers to his own horde. 
As news of his position spreads even more, the trickle of orc reinforcements will grow into a green flood. Orc mechs will begin to collaborate on more and more outlandish projects, building ever larger war machines and weapons for the WA. Smoke belching mobile fortresses and titanic war engines are cobbled together out of nothing more than scraps of metal, and the always heavy-handed enthusiasm of the Greenskins. With each victory, the new Warboss's legend grows, and more followers flock to his blood-soaked banner. As he fights to retain command of his ever-growing horde against a constant stream of challengers, he will subsume the armies of those he conquers into his own tribe. Entire mobs of mech boys raise towering scaffolds within which stampas and even gargants start to take shape. These mighty effigies ignite some primitive drive within the minds of the orcs who see them, causing the flow of wah energy they subconsciously generate to reach a fever pitch. At this stage, there is still much rivalry between the various clans and tribes, and each will strive to outdo all the others in terms of the sheer destruction that can be brought by its own war machines. Those mechs, without the resources to construct stampas and gargons, will instead create mobs of clanking kilakons and death dreads, or battle wagons, from which the war bosses can lead their armies. Soon, the emergent war begins to span whole worlds rather than just continents. Entire native populations are forced into slavery merely to manufacture ammunition for the horde's guns. Crude factory ships and war hulks are bashed into shape, the better to transport the orc armies into battle. When the lure of imminent bloodshed can be resisted no more, the deadly fervor washing through the horde overflows. Teeming orc armies mass and swell with a roar like savage oceans, and the skies fill with crude and bulky orc spacefaring vessels. While these masterworks of destruction take form, even more greenskins are drawn towards the Horde by the impending promise of using these massive war machines. Most of the orc boys of the Horde simply relish the chance to get into a really good fight, but those among their number who dream of becoming part of a truly awesome vista of destruction often choose the roles of crewmen and gunners on mobile fortresses and stompas. There is always a great deal of continued rivalry between the clans and tribes of Awa, and each one strives to outdo each other in the sheer killiness and amount of daka of their war machines. Others build the fleets of fighters, fighter bombers and bombers that are laden with guns and bombs that will assault their foes from the air once the battle begins. The Grand Masters that precede a full-scale orc invasion are truly an awe-inspiring sight. As the orcs gather for battle, smoke from thousands of oily engines fills the sky. The ground trembles beneath great wheels, tracks, and the thunderous strides of towering gargons. Armies of greenskins stretch across the horizon, raising their banners high to proclaim their reputation and allegiance their war cries audible for miles around. Looming Gorkonauts and Morkonauts, bizarre artillery pieces and force field generators chug, clank and buzz amid the green throng. Armadas of rusty vehicles raise roiling thunderheads of dust into the atmosphere, while Daka jets roar overhead, leaving contrails of filthy smoke. Speed freaks rev their engines and the boys fire their guns into the air as a carpet of Gretchen spreads out in front of the army. Eventually, the battlefield is barely visible beneath the endless sea of green, each orc warrior certain that the ground will soon be stained red. Here, the power of the Wa is palpable as a wave of aggression, and the orcs believe Gork and Mork are gazing eagerly down from the warp to see how their lads will fare. Then, as one, with an almighty bellow, the orcs surge forwards, and another world is plunged into unending war. Those greenskins that do not aid in the construction of the Waz war machines seek out like-minded orc fellows who fight in the manner that most appeals to them. The orcs call these groups cults, with a K, of which the vehicle-obsessed cult of speed is the most widespread and well-recognized by the Imperium though by no means the only cult which exists in orc society. 
The Storm Boys and Flash Gits are also representatives of their own cults. While those orcs who are unusually sensitive to the growing pool of Gestalt psychic energy may become Mad Boys. Hundreds of orc war bosses will add their own armies to the cause of a new war as the greenskin assault begins to spread across whole star systems rather than just single worlds. The orcs who launch a war generally have little in the way of a coherent combat doctrine like other intelligent races of the galaxy. Their only goal is destruction and mayhem in as large a quantity as they can muster. Once an orc war has fully gathered, with one almighty cry to the heavens from the throats of millions of orcs, another and then another world will be plunged into anarchy and destruction. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Orc War for today. I think one can talk quite a bit about this social phenomenon, slash migration, slash crusade, slash many other things, but hopefully in this episode I painted a decent enough picture for you. If I did miss anything vital, I will probably integrate it in future orc videos. But feel free to offer your thoughts on the war in the comments below. Was this video entertaining or informative? In that case, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing for future content. I thank you kindly for watching, and I wish you all a pleasant day. The Emperor Protects.